next uh, presenter will be Awa Ankawa, and we'll uh, speak about the design of a phone-based clinical decision support system for resource-limited settings. We're moving from the educational to the, uh, the clinical setting. Great, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah? Uh, so my name is uh, Yao Nakwa. I just uh, finished my PhD in computer science uh, from the University of Washington, and I'm one of the creators of Open uh, Data Kit. This talk is about ODK Clinic, uh, which is a, a new tool uh, designed to improve clinical decision support in resource-limited settings. Uh, this is work that's done with uh, Wynne Rebecca, uh, Tapan Parikh, Gaetano Borriello, and Martin Wery. Um, Wynne and Martin are from the Regan Institute uh, in Indianapolis, TAPS from the iSchool at Berkeley, and Gaetano is from the University of Washington's Computer Science uh, Department. This work has progressed quite a bit since uh, the paper was written, so I'll try to focus the talk more on the findings that uh, we've learned uh, uh, we have more evidence for uh, as the, the work has progressed. So HIV AIDS is a, is a chronic disease. Uh, and it's been absolutely devastating to the poor in Africa. The way the virus works is that it, it weakens your immune system. And so patients get sick from a wide array of, of diseases. Managing HIV is really about treating all those diseases, um, often at the same time. And the treatment protocols uh, can be really complex. So let me give you uh, an example. So this is just a treatment protocol for a patient suffering from uh, weight loss and diarrhea. Uh, you don't have to read all of this to understand. I just want to show you that it's pretty complicated. Uh, so if you add a serious illness like tuberculosis on top of this, um, the treatments get even more complicated. And complexity is a problem because uh, clinical care in developing countries, especially HIV care, is primarily delivered by doctors with relatively little training. And so most of these doctors work in hospitals that are under-resourced and busy, uh, kind of like uh, this. And just for some perspective on how under-resourced, uh, the U.S. has maybe one doctor per 400 people. Uh, Kenya, where I do a lot of work, um, has about one doctor per 7,000 people. And that's across the entire country. And so you can imagine in rural areas, it tends to be uh, a little worse. And as you can imagine, this combination of kind of complex treatments and lightly trained workers and busy clinics uh, can sometimes result in substandard care. And um, AMPATH uh, faces this particular challenge. So AMPATH is one of the largest HIV treatment programs in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, they provide care to about 130,000 active HIV patients through 52 clinics. And you can kind of see the clinics spread across uh, the Western province there. Their catchment area has uh, about 2 million people. And so over the last year, AMPATH has used printed clinical summaries to provide some assistance, some decision support to patients who are seeing uh, patients. So what's a clinical summary? Well, uh, clinical summary are a one-page sheet that is generated from AMPATH's medical record system or AMRS, and it gives you kind of a nice overview of uh, patient's data. So it looks like this, and it has patient demographics here, uh, the problems that the patients are having, recent medications, uh, recent lab tests. So it's basically this one-page overview um, of, of the patient. And so nurses print the summary when the patient arrives, and they give it to the doctor. And one of the most useful things about these summaries um, are the reminders. So these are patient-specific reminders to the doctor about how a patient is deviating from these complex uh, care protocols. So if the medical record system or AMRS sees that the patient is late for a test according to kind of the standard care guidelines that the Ministry of Health or AMPATH has, has laid out, it prints this little reminder at the bottom uh, for the doctor to follow. And it turns out there's plenty of convincing evidence from the developed world and at AMPATH that these summaries with reminders really improve the quality of care that doctors provide. And that's great. Um, but unfortunately, there are lots of problems with the whole printed summary process. And so let me go over some of those. So first, the summaries are not always available. That is, when a patient shows up, um, their summary may not actually be printed by the nurses and placed into their patient folders. And this is problematic because a patient visit without the help of summaries and reminders potentially has substandard care. And that's a, a risk that we don't necessarily want to take. Second, uh, the summary usage is really hard to measure. So uh, when a doctor sees the summary, they're supposed to put a big uh, slash mark through this. And I'll show you an example of this. Um, and they don't always do it. And this is important because uh, summary usage is a metric that supervisors who really care about the quality of care need to measure. Um, and so not knowing if the doctors are actually looking at the summaries or using them is a real problem. 
And then finally, corrections are not quickly added uh, to the patient record. So the data in the medical record system is not, that's used, is used to generate the summaries. And these, uh, this data is not always correct. And so doctors are supposed to correct the summary, um, but the corrections take a long time before uh, they're actually applied to the electronic medical record. I'll explain why this isn't in a second, but take my word for it uh, for now, that these slow corrections of medications and labs can affect uh, patient uh, care, and more importantly, the usage of, of summaries by uh, doctors. So let's start with the first problem of summary availability, and I'm going to kind of dig a little deeper and give you some examples of the, some of the underlying reasons. So over a five-month period, I looked at the, uh, the data that Ampath had collected at 18 of their sites, and this was data that's collected as part of routine care. Um, and so we looked at data from about 51,000 patient visits where we have pretty reliable data. And across those visits, it turns out some 20% of patients uh, did not get summaries. And so you can find the details about how we did this in the, in the paper. But uh, the data is from uh, nurses maintain this daily count of all patients that present at these clinics. Um, and then at the end of the week or every two weeks, uh, another group of staffers, they count all the summaries that they've seen uh, have, that have been printed for those uh, patients. And so that discrepancy is about 20%. And so this was about a year and a half, uh, two years ago. So beyond that data, I spent a fair bit of time at Ampath Clinics. I watched the workflow at, at, at a few clinics, talked to stakeholders. And the takeaway is that um, the system for printing and delivering summaries, it's pretty fragile. So there's lots of reasons for this that I document in the paper. Um, but sometimes, for example, you know, nurses are just busy and overwhelmed with the number of patients that are coming in. Um, and when they're overwhelmed, they're uh, just too busy to print the summaries. And even if they aren't busy, there are sometimes just issues with printing. So nurses will not necessarily report a problem that has happened with the printer, and it can take days or weeks before a supervisor finds out um, before uh, the problem can really be addressed. So during that period, patients are being seen sometimes without summaries, and that's a problem. So let's move on to the, the second issue, that summary usage is, is difficult to measure. And this is important because usage is a critical metric for supervisors who care about the, the quality of care. So doctors are supposed to put a big check mark on the summary, like this, um, and then supervisors go to each site each month, or each, each week, once or twice a week, and they basically count the marks on those summaries. So why don't doctors mark the summaries? Well, sometimes they forget, sometimes they ignore the procedure, but regardless, the, the whole paper system um, doesn't make it easy to monitor usage. I mean, you literally have to go to all these sites across Kenya uh, and count marks on sheets of paper. And it's really important for Ampath to know if the summaries are being viewed and current practice is not particularly efficient. So that's the second problem. Um, let's move on to the, the final problem with summaries, that corrections are not quickly added to the patient record. So um, during each visit, a, a doctor fills out an encounter form. Um, and this is the encounter form that documents everything that happened uh, during the visit. That form is then eventually typed, often with mistakes uh, introduced into the medical record system. The entry is done by a data entry clerk who has very little or no medical training. And the forms are then returned to the patient's folder. So it's this electronic data that's in the medical record system, which is supposed to be ground truth, uh, that gets synthesized into the printed summary uh, and printed when the patient uh, presents. So during the return visit, when a doctor sees a discrepancy between the handwritten encounter forms and the printed summary, they're supposed to note and correct that discrepancy on the summary. And then corrections are then again entered by a data entry clerk into the record. Um, and again, sometimes there are mistakes are made and the cycle continues. So let me give you a quick example. So here's an example of a summary. Um, and you can see that there's a missing lab test on the summary. So the doctor has seen the lab result of 1602 uh, on the encounter form in the patient's folder. Um, and then somehow the data did not end up in the electronic medical record system. So this is an example of a lab a result, but the same thing can essentially happen with medication. So why is this? Well, there's lots of reasons, and again, some of these are documented in the paper, but one of the biggest problems is that it turns out the data entry team is generally pretty busy with entering all the other paper forms in their hospital, and so corrections can sometimes take a long time to actually uh, get entered into the medical record system and approved by the data quality team. So after doctors correct the same mistake multiple times, uh, they end up getting irritated, because they're human after all, and, and they stop correcting. And that's terrible because you're not getting corrections of, of medication data or lab data by medically trained professionals who are physically there uh, with the patient. So that's a big uh, challenge. So to kind of summarize the problems that I wanted to solve, summaries are not always available, usage is, is difficult to measure, corrections take uh, some time before they're added to the record. And again, I detailed all this in the paper, but let's focus on these uh, for now. So there are a lot of reasons why this is. 
Um, but one of the fundamental reasons is that these are just limitations of running kind of a large-scale paper-based uh, system. So, and I think Ampath over the years has tried lots of techniques and has progressively improved the system. But as part of that work, they wanted to see if an electronic system would uh, work a little better. I thought it would. I'm obviously biased, but I thought it would. Um, and in particular, I believe that building a mobile application would be a good first step towards addressing some of these uh, challenges. So why mobile and not, say, putting a desktop application or a desktop computer into, into these sites? Well, uh, first, you know, summaries are not just for HIV doctors. Um, one of the things that Ampath is doing is that they're moving to a model of care where patients don't always have to come to the main hospital. Right, so if you're a chronic care patient, you might be able to just go to a dispensary or a pharmacist near your location, and that pharmacist uh, will check your vitals, and if everything is proceeding okay, you, you don't have to travel to the, to the clinic. And so mobile summaries are really perfect for those kinds of situations. Uh, second, you know, the logistics of installing desktop computers in an African hospital is, uh, is non-trivial. So just ensuring that you have reliable power is a full-time job, um, and there isn't really a lot of technical capacity to manage all that uh, infrastructure. Mobile devices just tend to uh, work better. And then, you know, the third reason is that mobile devices are just a nice fit for the work that Ampath has, has been able to do. So they have, they've had great success scaling smartphones in their care. So for example, they've used ODK Collect, which is another one of our tools, uh, in about 650,000 uh, community health worker visits. So they just have experience deploying phones and kind of running them at scale. So with that kind of uh, background, we figured, why not try uh, to do something on a phone uh, with ODK Clinic? So let me show you what we've built. So Clinic is an Android application that replaces just a summary sheet. Uh, and the main screen kind of looks like this. So uh, the way it works is that each, each doctor gets a phone. And in the morning, they download a big patch of, of patient summaries from the medical record system to the phone. And uh, you download scheduled patients in about a two-week range. So uh, if you download a uh, patient this morning, you'd get patients that are expected a week from now and patients that were expected a week before. And all that data is, is stored on the phone for offline use. And we can vary that number um, if, if that's necessary. And the app is structured that way because the medical record system itself and the connections to the medical record system tend to be unreliable. Um, I think as one staffer said, uh, it's not down for more than 30 minutes, but it goes down every hour or so. Um, I don't think it's actually that bad, but it is unreliable. Um, so when a doctor taps on a patient, the summary of the patient is loaded, um, and the summary is, is functionally and visually similar to the paper summary. That is, whatever you do on the summary sheet on paper, you can do on the phone. Um, and then as far as visualization, you know, you might think that, well, we, we have this fancy phone, um, we might want to do, you know, visualizations of weights and graphs and all these kinds of things. Well, it turns out those visualizations require a lot more training. Um, and so that can get expensive over time. So everything looks almost exactly as the, as the paper sheet. So that's, that structure is generally how we address this issue of available. We do this kind of offline caching. And so the summaries are, are, are generally available. Uh, we have prompts throughout clinic that are designed around standard operating procedures that Ampath has. So for example, if a doctor doesn't remind, respond to the reminders in the summary uh, and tries to kind of leave the summary without responding to these, we can do things like remind them to respond to reminders um, and tell them that you know, ignored reminders are, are reported to supervisors. So the goal here is to help doctors follow these standard operating procedures um, to make sure that care is, is standardized. And as a bonus, uh, because it's on a mobile phone, the details of how the application is used um, is logged daily and can be sent back to the medical record system uh, where it can be analyzed. And so this solves one of the problems I defined earlier with monitoring usage. Now supervisors don't necessarily have to go to every site and pick up old summary sheets um, and count if the doctor has put the big slash on them. We just kind of monitor usage as, as doctors use the system. And then finally, since uh, data from the medical record system is not always correct, uh, we added the ability to correct mistakes. Uh, so these could be previously ordered labs or in this image medication errors. So when a doctor sees a medication in the, in the summary, they can double check with the historical encounter forms or just ask the patient right there what medications they're, they're taking. And if there's a discrepancy, they can correct it right there in the summary. And because it's on the phone, it's not handwritten free text. It's strongly coded. Um, and this is a big deal because it means that you don't have to manually collect all the summaries to do this kind of data correction. Uh, you don't have to try to interpret the doctor's handwriting. Everything is strongly coded and hits the medical record system um, at the end of the day. So it, it helps solve the problem of corrections. So this is nice and all, but does this actually 
does it actually work, right? Um, well, it turns out it, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so the paper was accepted some time ago, and during that time, uh, ODK Clinic has been running at Ampath, two Ampath clinics, uh, for about seven months. Um, as of a couple of days ago, there are about 20,000 patient encounters that have kind of gone through the system. Um, and we have lots of data about how the, the system is being used. But I wanted to share some of the evidence that I have that kind of strengthened the findings uh, in the paper. So I'll start uh, with a couple of anecdotes. So it seems like um, the speed of the patient visit is, is about the same, but convenience is higher. Um, as one of the doctors said, I do not depend on staff to print for me the summary or put the summaries in patient folders. I can assess AMRS, which is the medical record system, uh, with a phone while in the room, thus enabling me to make corrections. So across all the doctors, and we did a bunch of interviews kind of over time, you get the sense that they really love the independence that the system enables. That is, um, doctors kind of want to do the retrieval and correction for themselves, and that strengthens one of the findings that we had uh, in the earlier uh, paper. They kind of want to own that, that process. The second thing is that we're concerned how patients would react to having doctors who have these kind of phones uh, in the system. And in the, in the weeks kind of prior to deployment, you got the sense that doctors were really wary about like, whether or not patients would uh, appreciate the system or like it or tolerate it. And so one of the doctors said a couple of months back, you know, when we were rolling down this thing, someone thought I was doing Facebook. So when I realized that, I started educating our patients. If a patient comes in, I tell them, look, this is the gadget, it's your patient file. I'm going to use it to have a look at your case, and now they understand, and so the interaction is good. And I think this quote speaks volumes. Um, it speaks volumes about Facebook's marketing, but um, it also speaks volumes that uh, a patient, it seems when you show them that this is a tool that's supposed to be helping their care, seem okay with the fact that the doctors are using the technology. Um, I dug a little deeper here, and you get the sense from the doctors that patients actually appreciate the technology. Um, that, you know, as a patient, when you come in, and maybe last week your doctor was writing things down on a paper sheet, and this week they don't have paper anymore and they're using this phone, that somehow you think that the doctor is more advanced in some way, maybe perhaps better. Whether that remains true, is true remains to be seen, but the notion that patient interaction isn't really hurt by this technology uh, strengthens another finding that we had in the paper. Um, overall, doctors seem to like uh, the app. There's almost a, a can-do and aspirational side of using the technology, especially with the younger doctors. One of them said, um, if the problem was happening every day, I asked if, you know, what if the system failed every day, day in and day out? Um, the solution is not, go to back to, is not to go back to paperwork. The solution is to look where the problem is and, and we'll sort it out. So that's not to say that the system here is perfect, um, but there's recognition, at least from the, the doctor side, that uh, the application is kind of there to help them improve the care of patients, and so they appreciate it for that. Two doctors said something like this as well. Um, it's a part of me now, I can't really see a patient without the phone. It's like something's amiss. And again, you get this sense that they understand that the phone is almost there to kind of help structure um, how they, they practice care. So I think probably the biggest contribution for this work is actually not for the doctors, uh, but more for the supervisors who kind of monitor the system and that they get much greater visibility into how the system is being used and more importantly, how you can tweak it to make it either better for doctors or better uh, for patients. So let me give you a quick example of that. It turns out uh, the summary viewing patterns um, vary widely by doctor. And that is uh, how long for, you know, for a summary opening, how long do they look at it? Let's start with Dr. A here very quickly. So on the x-axis is the number of minutes the summary was open. Uh, the y-axis is, is the frequency of count. So you can see this particular doctor has 111 viewings in the six to seven minute range. Um, and that's expected almost. Um, but here is another doctor. Uh, this is Dr. B, so notice that there are 292 viewings um, under a minute. And I want to be really careful here because the doctor, this does not mean that Dr. B isn't necessarily seeing patients or isn't looking at the summary. It just, it might be the case that they just open and close the summary at the end of the visit um, just to check through things. Um, but this ability to monitor exactly what's going on and then to dig deeper with the doctors is a really kind of big contribution that the system uh, makes. You know, that said, there's a lot more work to do in this space, so let me touch on some of these. Um, there are even more, we need to get even more patients on the phone. So uh, the phone tends to download patients that are expected to visit, but not all patients are expected. Um, there's actually a pretty high percentage of patients who actually just show up. Um, and to pull those summaries, you actually need a live connection to the server. And again, the server is unreliable, so that's not great. Um, we need more flexibility in the summary definition. So you want to be able to encode just more logic into the summary. That way, when you roll out a bunch of phones, you don't necessarily have to bring the phones back to update uh, software. 
Um, I think there's a lot of uh, desire from the doctor side to actually move to tablets uh, to get even more uh, screen real estate and do things like uh, encounter forms and, and just get rid of all the paperwork that they face. And then uh, tools to visualize breakdowns uh, in workflow. So we, we identified lots of gaps in kind of AMPATH practice because of this system. And it'd be great if we as kind of technologists didn't have to do that, that there were tools available for non-experts to be able to kind of just see where uh, problems in care were happening. Um, and then finally, probably the most important question is that does the mobile phone uh, increase the quality of care? We have some data. It's pretty inconclusive right now. And it'd be really great to do a more detailed uh, randomized control trial to actually see does having this kind of mobile phone actually change uh, care in some way. So to conclude, I think the biggest uh, lesson learned here is that technology can improve an existing system. Um, and I think most people know Kantaro's work. It really depends on the intent of the players within that particular system. And so this work has been an evolution of a paper-based system that Ampath created. And working with them, it seems like we've been able to create an electronic version uh, that makes and kind of gives them more capabilities than they had uh, before. So Ampath is pushing forward with this work, uh, which is about the best I can hope for. And I think I am out of time. So I want to uh, thank the change group, join our mailing list, and those are the Twitter accounts if you're interested in finding out more. Thank you. Ask away. Yeah. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if the mobile phones were also used for doctors' personal use, and if so, if you had any trouble with patient privacy. Patient uh, privacy. The phones were not supposed to be used for personal use. Um, that's not answering your question. Uh, so doctors were supposed to uh, pick up the phones uh, every morning uh, from a locked safe and return it at the end of the day. Um, so there was not supposed to be any personal use there. Um, as far as patient kind of data security, uh, the phones were locked with a pin, and all data that was being transferred uh, was encrypted. So that plus the physical security, um, we think, helps guarantee, uh, well, helps secure patient data uh, in some more way. I think future versions of the software will likely have kind of more stronger security because I think there is some interest in doctors not being able to, uh, to go home with patient records, to go to remote sites with patient records, um, and you know, we kind of trust the doctors to do the right thing there. But yeah. Hi, I'm Susan White from Virginia Tech, and lovely presentation and beautiful project. Um, I'm wondering if you had any problems with keeping the phones charged, or could you speak to that, and if that's an issue that you see with sort of scaling this? Yeah, you know, so we did these interviews with the doctors over a period of time uh, to get a sense of how, you know, how they felt. Uh, you know, within the first week, everybody was really concerned about using a touchscreen phone. By week eight, nobody cared about that. They were saying, you know, we want more functionality. And then by, I think we talked to them week 19 or so, you start seeing problems that are kind of inherent in the phone form factor, uh, in particular the quality of the chargers that were used and those kinds of things. Um, I think these are operational issues. Um, the doctors tend to have uh, power in this particular site enough that they can charge their phones. Um, and even, I think, in remote sites, there should be enough power to kind of keep the phones up, up and running. Uh, I think one of the, the perks of being on the Android platform is that you have a wide variety of devices. And so it may be the case that, well, these particular phones don't work really well, but, you know, you can drop Android on a, on a netbook, you can drop Android on a, a kind of a Kindle-like device, and that will give you a lot more power. So the platform gives you a lot more choices as far as, as power. Um, hi, uh, it is a wonderful project. I must congratulate you. Uh, at the outset, I do understand that you have a very, um, a very uh, human concern while preparing this uh, software or system. Uh, but I do have very serious concerns regarding this project, uh, and I, um, uh, I have to ask you two questions. Very important. First question is: Did you take the informed consent while preparing uh, this uh, software or the system and reviewing this data, huge amount of uh, patient data that you actually reviewed? Because you are an outside agent, you have in no relation with patients, sure. uh, and I think it is a violation of human rights, of rights of uh, privacy as well as confidentiality. And the second issue is also related to the same. And uh, you say that the data that you're preparing for this software or the system is available to the community health workers and other workers. So don't you think that by uh, producing and putting this data for, on the software or the system for all people to review and see uh, is actually violating is, and rather exposing this whole amount of data and thereby violating the human rights of privacy and uh, confidentiality of the patients? Sure. Uh, so let me take those questions. Uh, the first thing is that there's a lot of uh, data that I show here that looks like real patient data. Uh, everything that's in the slides are uh, not real patient data. 
Uh, second of all, uh, I am based in the University of Washington, uh, and I, this work is, is in Kenya, and we went through multiple IRB processes uh, to ensure that this work was done properly and safely. Uh, I never had any access to actual patient data. The software that only, pa only doctors see any, any patient data. Uh, so, I mean, I think the fact that we went through multiple IRB processes to make sure this work was done properly, and obviously worked with the ministries uh, that were kind of relevant here and got approval from the largest HIV clinic uh, program in Sub-Saharan Africa, I feel like we, we took care of those issues. So, and I'm glad to talk about it more in depth, um, and I, there's actually partners from AMPATH here too who you, you, can, you can talk to, um, but I think uh, we did everything that was possible to ensure patient data security. Okay, we have time for just one more question. I'm sorry, we'll have to, we can take this out into the uh, pause, but uh, one last question back here, please. Okay, uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, uh, I have a, a couple of questions, but I will... One, one last question. One. We can so, talk offline too. <laughs> Uh, the first question, I, uh, okay, one, the, the question I have is, uh, uh, I have seen a lot of uh, these kinds of projects in developing countries, but I would love to see uh, one system which is sustainable. It works and for a couple of time and it just gone. And do you have any plan for sustainability, particularly integrating what is going on in the country? Yes. Um, so, I mean, the, the high level bit here is, you know, as kind of the ODK team, uh, we've worked with AMPATH on a number of projects. Um, so the first one was a very similar project to this where, where we started with a pilot, and that project is now at scale. And I, I said, you know, over, you know, 650,000 patient encounters with uh, community health workers out in the field using Android phones, collecting data, having the data come back to the medical record system, and kind of impact patient care. So the same thing is going to happen on this project as well. Um, we don't pick projects that don't have any chance of scaling. So the project is still running. I'm not maintaining the project. Ampath has people in place to do those kinds of things. And there's a plan to scale that to all the sites. Um, I think that's the one big difference uh, about the kind of work that we want to do is that we want to pick projects and build software that actually goes to scale. We have a good track record, and I think this will be another example. Um, so we'll see in a year or two years if that happens, but we're definitely committed to that. Thank you very much.